Good day and welcome to the machine shop. Today we're going to give you a little quick tutorial on uh, how to set up the, uh, the machine lathe here. It's going to be a, just a basic introduction to show you how to center the tool, uh, what type of tools you can use. Uh, we're going to do a little center drilling and drilling and uh, it'll just uh, give you an opportunity to, to go back and look at this if you have questions. If you have questions after looking at the video, be sure and ask. Before I get started, I'm going to change my regular glasses and put on safety glasses so I don't get something in my eye. I'm going to take off my watches and rings if I have any on, just for safety. And I got loose sleeves, so I'm going to roll them up and make sure that I'm not going to get hooked up in the machine. So I'll just go over the lathe really quickly because we've already done this in other tutorials. Uh, the lathe is the chuck it does the rotating, which holds your work. There's a, an on switch up here, which is the green button, and there's a large bar on the floor, which is the stop button. So I can start and stop the lathe with that. I'll just give you a quick demo on that. This turns the lathe on, and there's a large bar on the floor, which is a foot brake, and it stops the lathe. There's two controls in the front that we'll be using. Uh, one is a large hand wheel, and it moves the carriage of the lathe parallel to the axis of the rotation, rotating machine and the small one moves it perpendicular so you would use one for facing and one for turning and there's also a compound that we can set at different angles and we can use that for cutting angles if we're doing so. So that's the basics of the machine. The speed setup is with the buttons on the control. Right now we've got the machine set up to run at 600 revolutions per minute which is fine because we're going to be using a piece of brass today. Uh, first thing is you have to decide what machining operations you're going to do. Today we're going to be doing a facing operation and a turning operation. Most times that's what you'll be doing in the lathe. There's also inside boring operations. So if we're doing a turning operation we have a couple of options for tools. We have a high speed steel tool that we can use or we have a carbide. The carbide tools are designed for harder materials and you just change the insert. The high speed steel is uh, for uh, uh, mild steel, brass and aluminum and things and we uh, we can use that for uh, turning the brass we're going to use today. So I'm going to use high speed steel. It's easy for me to repair if I touch it on the chuck or it gets worn I can sharpen it very easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it into the tool post. The tool post has a bolt in the top. When I loosen the bolt it rotates around the bolt. So I can swing this around and it allows me to change the angle of the tool for the different turning operations I'm going to do. So I can tighten that. I'll just set it for now and once we get the tool in we'll need to move it to make our adjustments. All the tooling that I need for the tool post and the chuck are on the board next to the lathe and if everybody puts it back where it's supposed to go it'll be there for you to use. So now I'm going to show you the quick change tool post. The tool post has a tool holder that can come out. There's a small can that moves this little block in and out and holds the piece. We have a bunch of different ones, so I can put in two or three different tools if I'm doing different operations, and it allows me to change them without having to go through all the trouble of setting the center height and everything each one. So I'll lay this in the tool post, and I'll just snug it up for now. Now I'm going to take a turning tool, a right-hand turning tool, and I'm going to put it in here. There's another wrench I'll need, which is the one with the small square in the top. I'll use that and I'll just tighten my tool bit so it can't move. The next thing I really need to do is make sure that I set the tool height on center, which is the center rotation of the chuck turning. So the easiest way to do that is to take a, a live center, which is with the lathe. Uh, there's a Morse taper on the back. There's a Morse taper inside on the tailstock. There's a large bolt that goes down and clamps the tailstock to the lathe, so when I loosen it, I can move the tailstock. I'll bring the tailstock out a little. Inside, there's a bolt that pushes it out and moves the tailstock back and forth to quill. So I'm going to just give it a little bang. That holds it in. If I want to remove it, I just go back till it touches the bolt, and the bolt will push it out, and I can remove it. So come off with a bolt a little bit, bang it in, and you're good to go. So this is the center of the lathe the center of the rotation of the chuck. So what I want to do now is turn the tool so I can see if it's, the tool bit is actually on center. So I'll turn the tool. I can use the smaller wrench, the 10 millimeter, and I can loosen this. And I adjust the height by turning this bolt, and that actually sits on top of the cam holder here and raises and lowers the height of the tool. So I can bring the tool back or I can bring the center up. 
I'll just snug it so it won't move and I'll bring the tool in and as you see the tool bit now is quite a bit lower than center so I wouldn't it wouldn't allow me to cut right to the center of the piece so it's really important that I center it so what I'll do is I'll just turn the screw a little bit that'll raise it up just want to make sure I'm not going to hit the tool and break it and I'll snug it and right about there looks right so now when I tighten this bolt so now the tool can't move anymore it's on center and I can start machining with the tool on center so I'll move the tailstock back out of our way now we're going to machine a little piece of brass today I'm going to do a facing operation to clean it up and I'm going to do an outside turning operation okay so I'll take my chuck key the chuck key fits in the chuck and it's really important to only put it in the chuck when you're loosening or tightening I'm going to tighten it up and I'm going to make sure I take it out and put it back on the board so I'll know where it is. Now the tool is not in a position there that I can actually do the machining so again I'll loosen the main bolt down the middle and I'll pivot the tool around. What I want to do now is take this tool and put it in a position so that I can do a facing operation. The tool is ground, it's less than 90 degrees so I can actually do a facing and a turning but if you look at it now the tool won't actually go in and touch the face because the cutting edge is right here on the tip, this tip right here. So what I need to do is I need to rotate the tool so that I can actually just get the point to touch and if you look there the point is touching so I'll tighten up the large bolt and I can perform a facing operation. I also because it's less than 90 degrees can move it to the outside and do an outside turning operation as well. So just to show you briefly I'm going to turn the machine on and do that machining operation. I'll face the part first and I'll machine the outside. So the facing operation and you know you're on center if it goes right away and takes it. Actually there's a little tiny bit sticking in the middle so you know it's not perfect but it's close enough for this. Okay now I'm going to touch it on the outside and I can do an outside machining operation as well. Okay, so sometimes as well if you're doing a basic machining on the lathe you will need the part to stick out of the chuck a long way. So the problem with that is because it's sticking out so far it, it, it increases the chance for a lot of vibration and chatter and makes it very unsafe to be doing. So to, to remedy that we're actually going to take out our, li our live center by winding the handle back and I'm going to put in a Jacob's chuck. The Jacob's chuck then can hold a drill, so if I want a center drill, which I do quite often before I drill a hole, or in this case we're going to center drill and use it to support the end of the shaft. The Jacob's chuck key is on the board as well, so we'll tighten this so it won't move. I can bring it up to the work now. The large bolt that goes down through the tailstock tightens. Push the green button to start the lathe, and I can actually drill a small hole. This is designed so that it drills a small hole for clearance and then puts a taper on which is exactly the same taper that's on the live center. So now I can move my drill back. I'll remove the drill bit and chuck. I can put that off. I'll put the live center back in now. So now I can take my workpiece, loosen it into chuck and I can move it out. As long as I got a little bit to hold, I can tighten it. When I move my live center up now, it supports the end and it allows me to do the machining operation without worry of chatter. I can move my tool in now and as you can see, I had the tool set up before for doing a facing and a turning operation. Right now we can't do a facing operation because the center is in the way. So I need to turn it now so I can just do an outside turning operation. So I'll loosen the bolt. As you can see there's quite lots of adjustments for here. We'll move this around. So now I'm set up to do an outside turning operation. And I'm ready to go. So I'll start the lathe. I can bring in and set up for my cut and I can feed it along. Just as a point of interest, I'm going to remove the center and show you what happens when I don't support the end. So Caroline is going to move back a little bit and back 
that for the wall a little bit so she's not in the way just in case this part comes out and as you can see if your end part is not supported it's very easy for the piece to hook and it could be disastrous for the person operating the lathe or somebody standing nearby. So it's really important when you do machining operations that you make the setup as rigid as possible. And we do that by holding close to the chuck or if we're going to be out supporting the end with a tailstock. And uh, that's about it for the basics. If you do have any questions after looking at the video and you uh, want to approach myself or Caroline, that's the right thing to do because we'll be able to get you straight and make sure that nobody's going to get hurt. So have a great day and we'll look forward to working with you later.